Lords, ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome, welcome to the film review show that should warn you that this episode is totally unsuitable for minors. On the menu today, we're packing our bags for the hills of New Zealand to watch one of the best comedy horrors I've seen in light years. Stick to the paths, folks. It's Black Sheep. <laughs> so, what's the plot? Well, farmer's boy Henry Oldfield has an innate fear of sheep, courtesy of a childhood prank gone wrong. Many years later, he returns to the farm in order to cut off ties with the family business. While he's there, Henry finds out that his older brother is embroiled in a series of dark genetic experiments which turn the sheep into bloodthirsty man-eaters. Mortimer, stop knitting the jumper and play the clips. Ah! Oh, come on then, chop! Bugger me. Give you something to talk to your therapist about. Let's be honest, we all had irrational fears as children. For some, it was the bogeyman who lived, I would have thought, rather uncomfortably under your bed or in the clothes cupboard. For others, it was friendly Mr. Tightglove, the sports teacher who doled out shampoo after games while he was actually standing next to you in the showers. Or perhaps you had the old lady who lived across the road. You know, the one, the one with the rusty metal items accruing on her porch and the black strands of hair sprouting from her upper lip and chin. Why couldn't she wax, damn it? Why? For me, ladies and gentlemen, it was cows. Yes, Boss Taurus, the humble moo cow. I, like our protagonist, Henry, lived on a farm, and the combination of incessant mooing and huge pink milk-yielding udders invaded my dreams like Freddy Krueger on a nocturnal joyride. The point I'm trying to make is this. Don't be fooled into thinking that your humble common or garden sheep can't be frightening. And here's where I have to doff my cap to Black Sheep's writer-director, Jonathan King. From the very first scene when Henry is claustrophobically surrounded by a flock of bleating sheep, the audience is drawn into a world where the merest bar can set you on tender hooks. The screen count is amply aided by solid special effects drummed up by Peter Jackson's Weta Workshop. A nice irony for film fans who remember that the Lord of the Rings director started in low-budget horror himself. Black Sheep isn't just a scream fest, though. It's also got some nicely timed comic moments involving sheep shagging, mint sauce and methane. Also, how's about this as a contender for the most imaginative weapon in a film this year? Morty. <laughs> Ouch. Now, I only had a couple of criticisms about this movie. At times, the director struggles to sustain the suspension, and the performances are a little on the slight side. But these are only minor grumbles. To be honest, I had a scream watching this movie, and you will too if you take it with a little pinch of salt. Black Sheep is out to rent now and gets four stars. And finally, it's time for Piggy Piggy Snack Snacks, and on the menu today, it's a white dazzler. How appropriate for a movie about sheep that I'm eating white dazzlers by a firm called Cinco or Ginkgo. I've never eaten their products before. Let's have a go and see what I think. White chocolate with hundreds of thousands covered on them. I don't really like them. The taste is somewhat synthetic. The hundreds and thousands complicate the milk chocolate flavour. This is not one for the memory bank. Three stars. <laughs> 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 